Welcome back to the AL.com Film Room. I'm Matt Scalisi here with John Parker Wilson previewing the Iron Bowl. And John Parker, I want to get inside Alabama's film room this week, and I want to know what they're looking at, what they're concerned about when it comes to playing this Auburn team. Yeah, you know, above it just being a, a rivalry game, and, and we know that when you play this type of game, you can basically throw the record book out the window um, because there's so much on the line. The players know it. The fans know it. So when we get out to the game, you got to be really ready to go and know what you're looking for. And I think for Alabama, one of the things is going to be, is Sean White going to be healthy? So is he going to be able to go out there, team up with Pat Way, and make Auburn two-dimensional? Because I think they're going to have to throw the ball in order to win. They can't just line it up and run it against Alabama. I think we learned that from LSU. But right here we've got uh, you know, Mississippi State basically um, in a really good position in the field. So it's first and 20 on Auburn's 10-yard line. Uh, they're running a man coverage. We know that looking up here, and they just get you know out of position. They don't plan it right. Sean White has plenty of time and throws a strike. And I think the thing about Sean White and what he's done from the first game to the to the the last game that he was able to play in healthy, he just kept getting better and better. So I think if he's he's back there for Auburn with Petway healthy, uh, they get a chance to put up some points. All right, another thing Alabama is obviously going to be keeping an eye on going into this game, Auburn's defensive line, one of the best in the country at this point. What scares you if you're Alabama when you look at this, this defensive line? So they've got some playmakers up front. Uh, Carl Lawson, Montrevious Adam both uh, pressure the quarterback, you know, affect the run game. And if Alabama fans more than anybody know how detrimental that can be to an offense, and especially with Alabama where we're at, had some injuries last week, so see, see where they're going to come this week. But this is just one example of the two best guys they've got right here. Carl Lawson's down here. Montrevious Adams is going to be in the middle of getting back there and getting back there quick. You know, Jalen Hurts, as fast as he is and as quick as he is, if he doesn't have any time to throw and it happens this fast, it's going to be a long day. So you have to protect uh, up front, and it goes for both the running game and the passing game. Because we've seen one thing from Lane Kiffin is the, they both play off of each other, whether it's a jet sweep, whether it's – play action pass, whether it's the run game to Damian Harris, whether it's the run game to Jalen, Jalen Hurts. You can see right here these big guys just being disruptive, spin moving, and, and two of the, two their you know, premier pass rushers are, are making, making it uh, chaos in the backfield. All right, prediction time, John Parker. What's going to happen in the Iron Bowl this year? You know, I, I think it's going to be a, a closer game than many would, would suspect, and I, I think it's going to be one of these low-scoring slugfests. Both have great off our defenses that have limited and caused a lot of offensive struggles. And, and I think our offense is probably a little bit ahead of, the, ahead of, the, of Auburn's. Um, so Sean White being healthy and Petway being healthy are two things that they're going to need work in their favor. For Auburn, you, you've got to be able to run the ball and throw the ball. You can't just line up and run it. For Alabama, it's going to be continuing to do the same things that they've done all year. Um, I think Alabama wins it, but I think it's going to be a low scoring game. All right, we're here with Cole Kublik now to break down the other side of the equation here. Cole, if you're Auburn this week, you're looking at Alabama in the film room, what are the things that you're trying to focus on with your players? Well, I, I think, Matt, a couple of areas that Auburn has a chance to take advantage. I think the defensive line for the Auburn Tigers has a chance to get some wins against this Alabama offensive line. And then on, on offense, Auburn has to find a way to move the football through the air. And with the uncertainties at quarterback, we don't necessarily know how that will happen. But Gus Malzahn and Rhett Lashley have to go back to the drawing board with whoever is going to be pulling the trigger and find ways to get wins down the field through the air. All right, Cole, one thing you mentioned going down the field on this Alabama secondary, we, we haven't seen too many teams really light them up since that Arkansas game, but Nick Fitzgerald here for Mississippi State had a, had a nice throw down the field, 42-yard gain on this play. I think. At times, teams have had success down the field. Jeremy Pruitt's going to give you opportunities because – most of the time, he wants to be more aggressive towards the box than he does on the back end. But here you'll see just a simple cover, too. Almost looks like, almost looks like quarters defense with the corners bailing as well because they're both playing zone, so they're going to bail out. And you see the two deep safeties. But you're going to have to get good throws. Chad Kelly showed it. You mentioned Austin Allen showed it. And here Nick Fitzgerald, just safety a little bit late over the top. Marlon Humphrey is the initial cover man. But these are the kind of plays that Auburn has to have with whoever's at quarterback pushing the ball down the field through the air. There have been some busts in this secondary. There's been some missed assignments, but this is just a heck of a throw and a read by Nick Fitzgerald. You see him just slide it in between the corner and the safety. It's a nice throw and catch. 
opportunities will be there because Nick Saban and Jeremy Pruitt don't believe teams can consistently do that against the athletes they have on defense. All right, Cole, we talked about Auburn's defensive line and what a strength that is for their team with, with John Parker a little bit earlier. Alabama's offensive line a little bit banged up coming into this game. Cam Robinson hurt his shoulder last week. Uh, they've had some issues at right guard, kind of shuffling guys in and out of there. Do you see this as, a, as a, another opportunity for Auburn? I, I think it may be the opportunity for Auburn to, let's not even say win this game, but be in this football game. And it's going to start on first down. Auburn's going to need first down wins to force this offense into second and third and longs. Now, I think that the Alabama offense – has been able to pick and choose the times that they want to go out and sort of test their passing game and allow Jalen Hurts to do things down the field. They haven't had to do it by necessity very much. Now, that's a nice luxury to have, and it's a great place to be in if you can just go out and say, regardless of the looks, we're going to go out and let our quarterback pitch it around a little bit, let Calvin Ridley get involved, let O.J. Howard get involved, let our, do our Darius Stewart get involved, and just sort of see what happens and work it, so to speak. Um, you want to get them in position where they're not working it, where they sort of have to do it. And I think Jalen Hurts is someone who you need to force to prove that he can beat you in the pocket. And there have been breakdowns in protection. And we'll see. I mean, Carl Lawson's an elite edge rusher. Cam Robinson at left tackle has had struggles with elite edge rushers in this league this season. And Barnett, you see there, he, got, he has an excellent dip and rip right around the edge. And Cam Robinson struggles with it. He tends to lean and lunge a little bit with this upper body at times. And you see Derek Barnett there made him pay. Miles Garrett wasn't able to do it because he wasn't in that situation very much. And they didn't really give him the opportunities on second and long and third and longs. But you see Barnett there. Derek Barnett has a great knack for jumping off the football. I don't think he's as quick or as fast as an Arden Key or a Carl Lawson or a Marquise Haynes. But he spots the ball and has a knack for getting off and jumping your snap count maybe better than any other defensive lineman in the league. But there's lessons to be learned there for guys later in the season they're going to see the same looks. So if Auburn can get Alabama, third and 10, third and 12, second and 10, second and eights, where they feel like it's an obvious pass situation, Carl Lawson and company can have a field day with this Alabama offensive line or force them into max protection, keeping a back and a tight end in, which would give them the numbers advantage on the back end. All right, Cole, so let's, let's bring this to prediction time here. How do you see this game playing out? Well, I, I still think Alabama is a better football team. And, and so many people, Matt, talk about, well, in a game like this, you never know what's going to happen and crazy things happen. But oftentimes, pretty much every time, the better football team wins. Alabama is a better football team. If Sean White was healthy, if Cam Petway was healthy, I do think this would be a different game. I don't think it would equate to an automatic Auburn win. But I think the physical element that that would help bring to this Auburn offense and balance through Sean White with how accurate of a passer he's been this season would make a huge difference. Based on those two not being 100% or maybe not even close to it in this game, I just don't see Auburn being able to find enough offense to get the win in Bryant-Denny. All right, well, we'll see what happens on Saturday. Thanks for joining us, Cole and John Parker, and thanks for watching us on Film Room.